Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Now, we try and do a puzzle variant uh, every week at least, and I've had an email request from George to take a look at this puzzle, which is by the Turkish constructor Murat Kantonta. Um, we've done a couple of Murat's puzzles on the, on the channel before, and they've always been of extremely high quality, so um, I thought we would have a look at this, and partly that's because I am so intrigued by the initial grid. Now, Several of you may look at this grid and go, well, what are you meant to do? Well, this, believe it or not, is something called a snake egg puzzle. And um, I'm just gonna bring up the rules for us. So here, here are the rules. You can see these rules were posted back in July, 2012 on uh, Serkan Yurekli's uh, blog. And that's because Serkan invented this type of puzzle. Um, and let's re read how we do it. So we have to locate a snake in the grid head and tail are given, the head and tail are given by the circled squares um, and the snake can only touch itself diagonally and the remaining cells should form nine separate areas with sizes one to nine each, one to five in the example. So we, I think the best thing we can do is to have a look at this example and just study it for a second and see what's going on. So you can see that they, there's a grey snake there connecting the head of the snake to the tail of the snake and all of the white regions are disconnected from one another and they are of completely um, independent size. So we've got a one size, a two, a three, a four and a five. So I can sort of see what I have to do. Uh, that may not help me. Um, and this puzzle first appeared uh, many years ago on gmpuzzles.com. So it's quite an old puzzle. So George has obviously been looking at their archives um, uh, and I don't think from his email that George could solve the puzzle, so um, it may be very difficult. I mean, indeed, when I first take a look at this, I am a bit stunned that this can have a unique solution. Um, um, but anyway, that that's by the by. I'm gonna I'm gonna have a go um, now. If you want to have a go, do click on the link under the video. That'll take you to our web page where you should be able to play along. And with that, let's have a look and a think about how we might try and do a snake egg puzzle. I have done a couple of these puzzles before. I think they were in a magazine, a Japanese magazine I own called Taketa. I think there were a few of them some years ago in that. So I can't claim complete innocence when it comes to snake eggs. Um, and I can see that if we look at the snake's head and tail here, there's no way this snake can go vertically at the start. I mean, the easiest square to look at is this square. If this square is part of the snake, then the snake would have to come into the square and go out of it. And then, of course, the snake would be of length five and the whole of the rest of the grid would be white squares, which um, would mean they definitely don't have an area of uh, anything useful. So there's no way that square can be in. I'll label squares that can't be in the snake with blue and I'll label the snake as grey I think. Um, so this square as well can't be in because if it goes up even if it turns like this remember that it can't turn back on itself so that would not be a valid snake so the snake would then have to move either to this square or to this square either way it connects with this square. So actually both those squares are also out by symmetry. And that squares out as well. Let's look at this square. If this square is in, we get exactly the same problem we had in the corner. The snake would have to move like that. And then of course, this is a snake. This is a complete snake. It's a snake with a head and a tail of length five and, and it's broken. So actually we can do quite well at the start. Oh, it's very clever. It's a very clever thought, this. This two now, look at this two. We know this is a this is in a, a white area or a blue area as it's going to be of length of size two. So it's definitely this square is not, cannot be in. In effect, it will be easier actually if I do that. So this square is not part of an area. Therefore, it's part of a snake. And that means that this snake has started its journey and it's going this way. So we should continue and now it can't connect here because that's going to mean we have a, a snake that's too small. 
And that's why we've got this five clue, or at least one of the reasons, isn't it? Because look now, this is a size five, and we know it can't be. So this blue area has to get bigger. So let's put another square into it. And that means we can put some greys in, in a, off the top of the snake. And now I get stuck. What am I meant to do next? Ah, I've, ah, I see. Okay. This square can't be part of the snake because then the snake would sort of branch off in two directions. So that's not snake and therefore this is of size two. Oh, and that's very nice, isn't it? Because now, once we've got a, a completed region, we know that every orthogonal cell with this region must be snake. Because if, for example, you know, we, I don't know, five is a bad example. If I tried to put the four region connected with the two region, these wouldn't be distinct regions. They would have size three in this example. So this must be gray, this must be gray, and this must be gray. Now, this square I think has to be gray, and that's because if I, although in theory, the snake could come this way. How could it ever come back to this area? If it if it did this and then say came down like that, and then here it would have to turn, and by turning it's gonna it's going to um, go back on itself. So that square's grey. This square's grey. This square's grey as well because again it can't come back on itself. And all of these squares now must be part of an area. Oh, I think I might have broken this. I think. Oh, no, it's OK. It's OK. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine just works. So that is the nine region. And this square, therefore, must be gray because otherwise our nine region is becoming too big for the puzzle. Good grief. I mean, this is just really, really clever, isn't it? Now, all of the squares, now we've bounded the nine region. Again, all orthogonal squares must be snake. This, this is a corner that is not an end. So something's got to, so it's got to come in and out of this square. So it must do that. Can't turn back on itself. So that's got to be um, blue. Oh, one sec. Sorry if you heard the... Uh, uh, small child there. Um, right, so let's carry on. Now, again, this snake, we can label all of those squares as blue because the snake can't branch in two directions. That's six connected squares there. And that's interesting. That is interesting. Now we can ask an interesting question about the top of the grid, I think. Yeah, we can. So the question we should ask ourselves is, is there a snake piece in the top row up here? Are any of these yellow squares snake? And the answer is that they must be. Because if they're not, we would have to label them blue. And now I've got an enormous area which has to be of size five, which is clearly not correct. So we know that there must be at least one gray cell in amongst these four. But once we know that, we actually know there must be three gray cells. And the reason is if we think about it, how, you know, the snake, once the snake hits this square, it has to come into this square somehow, and then it will have to turn. And to turn, once you hit an edge in a snake puzzle, it requires three squares. And in fact, it's possible all four of these squares are in. But it's definitely true that three of them must be. I mean, again, we can see if we try and go in and then come out quickly, it will always turn back on ourselves. So three of these squares are in. And therefore, definitely those three squares are in. And therefore, we can start extending this. We don't yet know whether this comes this way or just turns up immediately. Um, I, 
Ah, now I see something. Now, so if we think about this, we know that there's some gray cells up in the top right of the grid, and we've got two snake ends down in the bottom left. So somehow we have to connect these four things to each other. How are we going to do that? Remember that in doing that, I must never connect this square to this square before it's we've connected these two, otherwise we're going to have two snakes, and that's not the idea. And in fact, you can see that this square must connect to that, that square there somehow. Because if I connect this square directly to this square, let's try and do that, this part of the snake is isolated. So, how do we get this to this and this to this without breaching the rules and I think this is quite cunning because we have to look I think at the bottom three rows so to get this out and over to this side of the grid it could come along here for example but now this side must not touch this orthogonally so it has to come below it and there would have to be a gap between so these squares have to be blue this has to come this way and this has to come that way like this. Now that might be important. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That could still be size eight. Um, what should we do now? Well, this, these two squares must be blue because they are orthogonally connected to snake. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that this could still be a blue square if this was of size eight. Ah, but, but, yeah, this is nice. Let's have a look at this square. Is this part of the snake? Let's imagine it is part of the snake. What does this mean? Well, the snake would have to go in and out of the corner like that. Now the snake can't turn back on itself, so it has to extend up. So all of these squares would be blue, and this region is too big. It's 8, 9, 10, 11. So that is huge, because that means this square is blue. And that means this square is grey because we know this and this need to connect. But we don't yet know whether it comes this way or this way, although we have to be careful with this blue square in the bottom left-hand corner. We mustn't make it of size two. Um, let me just think about this for a second. Oh yeah, this is interesting as well, isn't it? So if this square is part of the snake, we have the same problem. Look, because it would then develop like this. We can't let this be of size 2, so it would have to come down. And now all of these blue squares are connected again, and they're of size 10. So that does not work. So this square is also blue, which means this must be grey as well. So that option is now ruled out because that leaves a size 2 space. We need this to be 3 or 4. So that option is ruled out as well actually. Look at that because if I do if I make the snake go like this, this area is of size 4 and this area is of size 4. So the only other way of doing it would be like that. And that doesn't work because this area is of size 5. Oh, good grief. So this 5 is disambiguating that this cannot be the shape down here. And I suppose you can't also make this size 9 as well, like that. That would also be, in theory, possible. Although no, it wouldn't that that nine wouldn't be possible because that would leave this a size two. 
So, what does all of that mean? Well, I think it means, so we've got to avoid two four shapes, and we've got to avoid this being of size five. So that is illegal. Making this of size five is illegal, so this has to be blue. That therefore has to be, this is now of size eight, which is the maximum it can be. Therefore, orthogonally connected squares are snake. So let's put the snake in. That must be snake. And this must be blue. And this region is of size three. Wow. Now, what can we do? Well, now we have to be very careful because I can't make this snake because then the snake will never have gone up here. So that's blue. Therefore, this is gray. Therefore, we've isolated this square. That must be the single cell. That must come this way. Let's carry on with that. That must come this way. Therefore, this one's blue to stop it going back on itself. These are both of size one, so they must both get bigger. Now they're of size two, so they must both get bigger. And in fact, this one can't be three either, so it must go at least that far. This is extraordinary to me. Look at this. There was hardly any information in a 10 by 10 grid. And from that you can create, or Murat has created, such an intricate puzzle. It's just brilliant. This must be blue. And we know that this isn't the end of this blue. This blue must extend at least one more square. That must be grey. So this area here is of size six at the moment, but it could still be a size seven because we haven't used seven yet. Ah, now if it's of size six, so if this was a complete region, then we know all orthogonal cells would be snake. So the snake would go like that. But now all of these squares would have to be blue and that makes this region too big once you it won't well it makes it bigger than five so that's not allowed um, so that means this is of length seven but we, we haven't yet finished it so let's make that clear so there's one square to be added to this region but it can't be that one because then the snake would come in here and would have uh, would become isolated. So that square must be snake. Uh, and the same is true of this one now. This must be snake as well. Let me just show you why. If I try and make this blue, this snake can't get to this square without turning back on itself. So that's not allowed. So this so and does this get too big again if I make that blue? So if I make that blue, these would both be grey. Yeah, it gets too big. All of those have to be blue, and that's that's too big to be of size 5, because all of these would be connected. Ah, in fact, those ones at the bottom as well again. So that one is also grey, and therefore this one is blue and is of 5. And one of these two squares must be blue. Oops. I see, right, I've got, I think I see what's going on here. Whichever one of these I make blue, it pushes a gray square into these two squares here. Now that is a, that means that this strand of the gray of the snake has to come directly down because if this comes out, it will hit this end of the snake as it dodges the blue piece I'm gonna put either here or here. So this has to come down which means these two squares are blue. I think this one also has to be gray. Um, let me just think about this for a second. 
yeah, it does, um, because otherwise, otherwise everything goes wrong. If I try and make this blue, for example, then this would have to be blue, and this end of the snake can't get out. So this is definitely grey, and therefore this square here is blue, because we know we want to connect this end with this end. We've got to be careful about that. And now we've found our region of size 5, so we're, I think we're done. I think we're, this is the key step. So now, again, this must not connect here, otherwise we're going to have a very loopy snake. So that's blue. This must be grey. All of this is blue. This is of size 6. This is of size 4. This is grey. And this is a seven. My goodness, what a puzzle, what an idea. I can't believe that's possible. That is, I mean, even though we've just done it, that is a work of art. I loved that. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments what you thought. Something a bit different. I know we don't do um, puzzles as often as some, as you, some of you would like, but I think that is a stunner today. And we'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.